Good morning, everybody. It's Kate Kaltoff. Welcome. This is a stamping to share video here on Facebook. And we are going to make a couple of cards with the most gorgeous stamp set. It's part of a new bundle in the mini catalog that debuts actually tomorrow. So very exciting. Let me see if I can see comments. Oh, yes, I can see comments. Good morning, Yvonne. Thanks for sharing. I appreciate it so much. As I was mentioning, this is this is new in our 2023 mini catalog that goes from September 6th until des through December. And it's called the Translucent Florals Bundle. So this is what the stamp set looks like. And it's something that, you know, if you first look at the catalog, you might not be terribly impressed by the samples, but once you start working with it, it is so much fun to work with. And I'm gonna give you a couple of tips for stamping with this. This is the first card that we're going to do. And look at that gorgeous, translucent look on those petals. Isn't it beautiful? Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Candy. Good to see you here. And then we're also going to use some Stampin' Blends and create a vellum flower for the top of this particular card. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And again, here's the stamp set. This is what the dies look like. And let's go ahead and get started. So we're, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to need some scrap paper because I'm going to be stamping off the edges. You might not have noticed this, but there's a stamped background on this Granny Apple paper. So let me grab the things that I need. So I'm gonna do my stamping first before we go into where this designer series paper is at. You might notice too that if you're watching today on the 5th, I don't have the supply list up and there's a reason for that. It's because I can't get the supply list linked in my online store simply because the catalog is not live yet. But we're going to start with this Granny Apple Green paper, four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored at five and a half. And we're going to stamp on it. So to do that, we are going to be using this beautiful translucent um, leaf piece, you could say, that you can tuck in a floral. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna tuck that in. But first we're just gonna stamp the background. And so I am using Granny Apple Green ink. This is just stamping uh, directly onto the paper, tone on tone. Tone on tone just means the same color of ink onto the same color of paper. So I'll just get a few images stamped here and then we'll let that dry while we work on the rest of our card. So I'm not stamping through the middle because that won't be seen. So no reason to stamp there. And that's probably good, just like this. I'm going to close up this ink pad because I do not think I need it anymore. At least, oh well, maybe I do, but I'll use it a little bit later. So I'm gonna set this out of the way. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp our inside panel. I don't even know if I showed you the inside panel. So this is the outside panel. And then on the inside, we're going to do a little, do you notice how this sort of goes from bottom left to upper right? Well, we're gonna mimic that same look on the inside. And, and so we're going to be stamping this two by four inch basic white panel let me go ahead and do that real quick. So again, I guess I do have to get my Granny Apple Green ink out because I need to ink up my leaf image. And the way I'm going to do that is just I'm gonna set this onto my scrap paper at an angle. And then I'm just gonna come in, I think I'll just stamp it like this. And then I want my words in Berry Burst because the colors that we're using today are Berry Burst and the granny apple green, they look so good together. So then we're gonna say, wish, since it's the birthday card, it's wishing you all the happiness in the world. I'm going to stamp that like this. So, so if you look at it straight like this, 
It sort of looks like the words are at an angle, but we're gonna be putting this onto the inside panel at an angle, so the words will actually be straight across like you would expect to see them. So I mentioned this was a two by four inch panel, so we're gonna layer this onto a two and a quarter by four and a quarter inch panel. Remember, my cards are always easy. So not too hard of measurements today, I don't think. I'm trying to think if I have hard measurements on my other card, I might not. Sometimes I have hard measurements, but all the techniques are pretty much, um, you know, basic stamping, because that's what I love to do. So let me go ahead and we're gonna attach this onto this mat. Now we can put that onto the inside panel of our card because it's just ready to go, so we might as well. So I'm going to use some multi-purpose liquid glue to do that. I hope everybody had a really nice Labor Day weekend. As you know that I mentioned last week, I got a new puppy. So we were spending a lot of time training the puppy. And my lawnmower comes back today, and I haven't had it in three weeks. So I needed my puppy to be a little bit trained so I could maybe leave the house for a few minutes to mow some lawn. So that's what's going on today. So I will not be taking the camera off the stand showing you something fun in the house because everything that's taking place today is going to be outside. So here's the inside panel that is done. And now we can go ahead and continue to work on the outside panel. So let me share with you what we're using. We are going to, we took some designer series paper from Bright and Beautiful 6x6 DSP. And I am in love with this ombre look, this ombre paper. So I'm just gonna kind of quickly flip through the ombre stuff, because that's what I love the most about this paper pack. It does, it is part of a product suite in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog, but I'm crazy about the ombre look. And I actually made two cards this weekend that we're going to be making next week at this time that use those ombre papers. I'll show them to you in a little bit. So this is what all the paper looks like. It's a six by six pack, you get 48 sheets. And then the back is every kind of fun, bright, colorful, birthday, stars, um, squiggles, could be really good for any kind of celebration. So that is the back side. But as I mentioned, I'm crazy about the ombre side. And I love that Stampin' Up! does that with their papers where they, where they do something a little bit calm on one side and a little bit fun and wild on the other side. One of the uh, wonderful things that Stampin' Up! does to make their paper so versatile. All right, so you might notice these are some kind of odd sizes. We've got a three by six that we'll be layering on a three and a quarter by six inch panel. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to cut those edges even with our card once we've put it onto our card. So we do have to remember we have a ribbon wrap. So I'm gonna get that ribbon out because I just hate it when I forget to wrap ribbon. I don't know about you guys, but ugh. It's so annoying if you forget, so we are not gonna forget. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this panel. I know, it seems a shame to cover up those stars, but I'm not really doing that kind of a birthday card. I'm doing a floral, calm, bright, beautiful birthday card. All right, so we're just gonna line this up. And we're just making sure the top and the bottom have about the same amount of mat showing through. And then before we actually put this onto our card, we wanna think about where that ribbon is going to go. My goodness, I'm proud of myself for, my, for remembering my <laughs> ribbon today. So I'm just gonna kinda of line it up here, grab my ribbon scissors and just determine about what I need. And then I've got my scotch tape handy. I'm gonna grab a couple pieces and we're gonna tape that around. So I'm just going to look at it like this. And I think, I don't know, I think I wanna go kind of right about where these ombre pieces are, are moving into the darker colors. So we're gonna put tape on this side to hold it in place and tape on the other side to hold it in place. Then we can go ahead and we're going to glue this onto the front panel of our card. 
For those of you that are not catching the live today, which, you know, I probably should have mentioned this in the beginning, but, or if you have to leave early and want to drop in to see me, I will be doing a premiere tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock over on YouTube. All right, so now, are you wondering how I laid this down? I just took kind of the corner piece here on my paper panel and I lined that up towards the top of my card and then follow it down and I've got the bottom panel layered at the bottom edge of the card and I left about the same spacing here and here. Then all I have to do is flip it over, press it in a little bit so it adheres well. I'm just going to take a Stampin' Up Snaps and I am just going to trim this right next to my card and do the exact same thing on the other side. And our card is all trimmed up so we don't have any weird overlaps on it. Isn't it pretty? I just love it. All right, so now I'm gonna give you a tip about stamping. And I did pre-stamp this, but I do, I pre-stamped what happened initially and then how I corrected it. So give me a couple seconds here to grab everything. All right, when I first stamped, the leaf and the floral piece, I'm gonna hold it up. I'm gonna see if I can hold this up to the camera. Can you see how heavy handed that seems to be? It wasn't, I was barely touching this to my paper. And notice all of these not so good dots in my very translucent like leaves. I didn't like that look, I'm sure you won't either. And this, this wasn't too bad, this stamped pretty good, but it was still a little bit heavy. So the way to remedy this situation when you know your stamping is not quite right, it seems like it's a little gloppy. What I did is I took my ink pads and I stamped off onto some scrap paper. Just took the entire ink pad and stamped off a couple of times just to remove all of that excess ink that was on the top. This is a brand new pad from Stampin' Up! This Berry Burst. So it was really, really full of ink, and I just had too much ink. Now, my Granny Apple Green ad um, pad wasn't particularly new. However, it still seemed very inky. I do re-ink my pads pretty often. But if your pads are too inky, you're not gonna get a beautifully stamped image like this if your ink pads are too inky. So you, if you're finding that you're getting all of this like gobbledygook when you're stamping something that's supposed to be really pretty and translucent looking, just take your ink pads and, you know, a couple of times on some scrap paper. This, the berry burst was so full, I actually did that several times. But the ink, the green one, I think I only did once or twice. But I just cut that off my scrap paper to remind me to show you that. Then, of course, there's some coordinating dies. So once I got an image I was happy with, and here they are, I die cut them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be setting those into our card. But I think what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to get this in here and then kind of tape that down because I like the way this looks. Cause I'm gonna have my flower like this at an angle. And then to keep that look, just because I really like how this is set up right now, I'm just gonna flip it over. I'm gonna add a little bit of scotch tape to the back. And then I don't have to worry about that piece, you know, getting all discombobulated cause it's all ready to go now onto my card. All I have to do is put it on with dimensionals. Another thing that I did is I took a piece of scrap berry burst paper and I stamped the happy birthday with Versamark ink. And then I used the Embossing Editions Toolkit along with the Embossing Basics Powder. So this is the embossing, well I should take out a couple of these things. 
This is what the embossing additions toolkit looks like. It's a place where you can kind of contain all of that powder that comes from embossing. So I've got my white embossing powder here, which is part of our basics embossing powders pack. I did not use this this particular time, but sometimes if you find you have a lot of dryness in your house or a lot of static electricity, you'll find that if you add a little bit of this kind of a talcum type powder over the top of your paper first and then do your stamping and embossing, you won't have all those flecks. But again, my house is not really a problem right now. I didn't have any, any issues with that, so I wasn't using it. But it's a, it's a nice little thing that you can find in our annual catalog. But then I stamped the sentiment with Versamark ink I put the embossing powder onto it, and then I heat set it with the Stampin' Up! heat gun. And I don't know if this is a current example of a Stampin' Up! heat gun or an old example, but this is the heat gun I have, and I know it's originally from Stampin' Up! And, um, and when I embossed it, you get this really pretty raised image. Can you see that? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty, it just pops. It makes the card look awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to assemble all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and put some dimensionals here and here on this side of the card. Because I want to avoid getting it where the ribbon will be. So I know if I just keep my dimensionals to the outer edges, I'll be fine. Because then the ribbon is going to be going through the middle of this sentiment and all will be well. So we're going to flip that over, and I'm just going to set this on about like so. And then I can put my floral piece just like this. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, I just love it. So then all I have to do is add dimensionals to the back of my floral piece. And then this card will be done. And if you have any questions about how to emboss things or if you've never seen a demonstration of that, let me know. But I feel like most of the people who are watching my YouTube videos do know how to emboss. So sometimes I don't go through all of those steps with you just to save a little time because I want to share two cards with you that I've made this week. So we'll just set that in like so. And now to add the perfect, perfect finishing touch. Let me get the scrap out of here so you can see the card a little better. We are going to add some glossy dots. So the glossy dots are a carryover from last year's catalog and I love them. I love that they have a large, a medium, and a small. It just makes it a no-brainer as to what to put on your card. Just put on a large, medium, and small. These dots are going to last you a long, long time. And so obviously we're going to use the pink dots. And I'm going to take my large dot and we're going to tuck that in down here. Kind of in this little corner right there. And then we'll take a medium dot and we're going to go kitty corner up here. And then we'll take a small dot and we'll just drop that in right there. So let me hold that up so you can see exactly where those, those glossy dots went. Isn't that a beautiful card? And then of course our inside panel. Oh, I just love, I just love this stamp set. Absolutely love it. All right, so then I'm going to make another card with that very same stamp set. So I'm gonna set these aside for a second. Hold on, just cleaning up a little mess here. You know, one thing I oh, I just saw, I did not mention where I got, where I die cut this happy birthday from. I mentioned you put this all on scrap paper, but I used the nested essentials dies and I used the smallest of the rounded rectangles to cut out the happy birthday. So, sorry about that. I meant to show, to, to show you that, and then I just completely forgot. Got set aside on my desk. Okay, I'm going to put away these colors because we are going to say goodbye 
to these particular bright, happy, awesome colors. And we're going to go with a more subdued, subdued, I can't say that word. Sub, I'm not even going to try. Um, that kind of a mood, you know, quiet, calm. Because we're going to use All About Autumn, 6x6 six six specialty, specialty DSP. Um, again, as a reminder, my paper shares are coming up, and I had a lot of sign-ups last week. So I'm expecting a few more today because tomorrow I place the paper order. So if you want to get in on that first round, uh, be sure you get your email in to me today about that. You can find all the info on my blog at stampingtoshare.com. But you can see the back side of a lot of these lovely papers have a foil part to them. I know, and it's really hard to decide what, what to use and what not to use. But when I was looking at these papers, I thought, you know, I'm probably not going to use the books. Not that I don't like the books. I love the books. And I know I've seen some cute cards with it out there, but it just doesn't speak to me quite as much as some of the other papers do. And I love the backside. I love how it's a little distressed looking. So it's it's foiled, but it also is a little bit distressed. So this is the side we're going to use. So sometimes you just have to kind of figure out now what paper maybe would I like to use the back side. So I picked my back side, and then this is the background that I chose for this card. You can see how pretty it is. Oh, I love it. And here's the inside panel. You'll notice there's some things that are new. In addition to the translucent bundle that we're using on here, and in addition to the All About Autumn specialty designer series paper that we're using on here, we are also going to be using this circle cutout. And these circle cutouts are amazing. You know, it is the deckled circle cutout. So let me show you that. And it's so good. So good. It looks like this. And it's huge. I forget how many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh my gosh. I think it's 14 circles. It's incredible. And then a little time-saving tip for you because I'm using this bigger circle on the outside and a smaller circle on the inside. What I did to create these circles is I took the three, the three deckled circle pieces that I wanted to use. I just added a little bit of removable tape on the back after I had them all lined up. And then I was able to take a panel of our pumpkin pie paper and I just ran it through all in one fell swoop on my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And that gives me just beautiful cutouts that I can use on my card. And then I have an extra centerpiece that I could maybe use down the road for a project. And then um, again, I did all of that just by adding a little bit of scotch, not scotch, well it is scotch, but it's the removable scotch tape just to line it all up like that. And it's probably one of my very, very favorite products in the new mini catalog. I'm crazy about these circles, just crazy about them. So that is where we're at. So I think since we're this far, I will go ahead and start making this card. And you saw how I did these, so we'll just leave these out and I'll put these on. Oh, and I should show you the inside panel a little closer. I love that Stampin' Up! is using so many adhesive back sequins these days because that means you can even put pretty little embellishments on the inside panels of your card and they will not, you know, mess up your card or make it even harder to go through the mail. So the first thing we've got here is our inside panel. We're just going to finish this up and get it into our card base. It's four by five and a quarter. And then I did go ahead and I stamped in, I'll show you the color here, Calypso Coral, because that will match the card base that I'm using. So I did pre-stamp that. And then I'm going to take the smaller of the two circle die cuts that we have here, and I am going to... Go ahead and add a little 
ring of glue around the smaller of the two circles that I cut. I'm gonna set this right here. And then I'll add the, the really pretty um, sequins at the end when I do the front panel. All right, speaking of the front panel, we're gonna get started on that. So that again is the All About Autumn six by six specialty paper. I cut it down four by five and a quarter. And then we're putting it on a card base that's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And because there's no wraps on this, we can just go ahead and attach this with a little multi-purpose liquid glue. Out of curiosity, for those of you that are demonstrators or maybe really avid customers who are very familiar with all of our designer series papers, um, do you have a good idea for using the books? Maybe I shouldn't even ask that because <laughs> I, I look at it and I think of a scrapbook page and not so much a card. But if you have a good idea for me for cards, I'd love to hear it <laughs> after I've already cut up all of my fronts, but you know, it's good to know, good, good things to know about that. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take that bigger circle that I shared how I did, and I'm gonna get that glued on because that just gets glued right through the center. It's super easy. Again, my cards might look a little elaborate, but they're not, they're so easy. I would consider most of my cards to be beginner cards. If you're familiar with like a Big Shot or um, a stamp and cut and emboss machine, or if you're familiar with embossing, I mean, my cards are pretty. I think, I think most people would agree, but they're not hard. They're just not hard. They're easy and elegant. That's what I've always said about my card making, easy and elegant. And I think this card just fits the bill, right? Easy and elegant. All right, so now let me tell you, now that we've gone through some of this, let's see, to keep grabbing some supplies over here. So now, how do we make those petals? So let me show you what you want. You want to grab some cardstock vellum. Hold on, I'm just gonna set this on the inside panel so I can get it out of the way. Oh my goodness, I think I just ran out of just ran out of stamp and seal. That's okay, I've got a refill somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna set all of this aside for a second. So, um, well, not, a, not even a second. Let me get this out of the way. Hold on, I have to make room on my desk. Okay, there we go. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna tint these petals. So these petals are translucent, just like the name of the stamp set, Translucent Florals. Um, and to get this, we are going to do some shading with some Stampin' Blends. So I grabbed Lost Lagoon, the light Lost Lagoon, and that's what I did the leaves with. So all you do is you just, I mean, it's pretty elementary. I just, Went back and forth until I had a nice, even, well, it wasn't even even. It doesn't have to be even. I'll show you what I mean. So this is what I did for the leaves. And then I just cut them out with that. And then for the very small little petals, I should show you. There's two bigger petals that I used on the bigger flowers and then I used one of each of these, or one. I cut two out, but I used one on this flower and one on this flower. And then there's some little flower centers, and then of course, two different sizes of leaves. So the two different sizes of leaves is what I used to cut here. And then to make the flower centers and this smaller flower accent, I used the dark Calypso Coral. And again, that's all I did. Just ran some down and then did my cutouts here. And then for the lighter leaves, I used the light Calypso Coral and just again made 
Made nice big sweeps, used the side of my brush and Stampin' Blend. And then I didn't want any white spaces showing, so I do go back occasionally and I do just make sure that there's no white spaces. And then that's all I did. So I prepared my paper like this. And then I just cut, I just die cut things. So I did pre die cut some things just to show you. Here's my, here's the papers I used to die cut. So you can see I cut out the small flowers, the flower centers, the big flowers, another big flower, and a whole bunch of leaves. And now I'll show you how to assemble one of these flowers. One flower I pre-assembled, so it looks like this. And the other flower looks pretty much very similar to this, and so I'll assemble that on camera. So all I do is I lay one of these flowers down, doesn't even matter which one. I grab my, my little mini glue dots and I just add a glue dot to the center and I think, well, that looks pretty good. So I drop that in. Then I am going to take one of the darker flowers that I cut out using the dark calypso coral and I'm just gonna fold one of these leaves well I guess it's a petal I'm gonna fold one of these petals so it looks like that just fold it over and then just find a place that you think it would look good tucked in so I am probably just gonna tuck it kind of under this little petal here Yeah, I think like that because you just want you just want a little something and as you're doing this can I assure you that nothing that you do as you're doing it is going to look or feel right but keep 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 strong keep going with the process it'll all look good in the end um, then I'm gonna grab some leaves And I'm gonna take a big leaf and a little leaf and I'm just going to add a little glue dot to those. And I could tuck, tuck one of those in. And I'm gonna add another glue dot to do that tucking. And again, like I said, none of this ever seems to look pretty while you're doing it, but when it's all done, it looks really beautiful. And then you'll be congratulating yourself and patting yourself on the back and saying, yay, good job me. Oops, I've glue dotted it right to my desk. <laughs> there we go. Add another glue dot and another leaf on this side. And now we're gonna add that cute little center of the flower. right like that and then we're ready to start decorating the cart the front of our card so once again I used the nested essentials the small rounded rectangle to die cut my happy birthday which is stamped in Calypso coral and I have that right here I did pre-do that so we wouldn't have to take so much time getting that ready. So all I'm going to do now is attach this first. I'm just going to set that in like so. Because I want that to make sure that's in there just right. Then we're going to take one of our floral pieces and we're going to set it up here. We can even kind of tuck it in to the back of the sentiment, which I think looks pretty. And again, I'm going to do that with a glue dot. 
glue dots stick really, really well onto vellum. So don't worry about these coming off because they won't. So I'm going to tuck that in. I like this. And every one of your cards is going to look a bit different depending on how you've assembled your flowers and what that all looks like. I mean, that looks pretty just by itself. So even if you don't want to, go ahead and put that next flower in. But, you know, as long as I pre-made it, I'm going to do it. Add the glue dot. We'll tuck that one in down here. And then I use some, simp I think it's, oh shoot, what is this one called? Simply Elegant Trim, I think. So we have gold and silver. So I've got a little gold bow. I'm going to, again, attach that with a glue dot. Now this is a little trickier because can you see the glue dot's a lot bigger than the bow? I'm sure you can't see that. <laughs> Just trust me, it is. Let me grab my take your pick tool. It all boils down to having a take your pick tool which is lost. Oh no. I should have like 10 of those on my desk because I use them so often. Can't find it. Well, I'm going to use the scissors. That works too when you're in a pinch. So I'm going to take my scissors and just kind of scooch that glue dot underneath my bow. And then I'm going to add the bow right here to my flower piece. Like, how pretty is that? So, so pretty. And then we're going to add the crowning touch. Ideally, you would want to use your take your pick tool, which I know I used. I know I used it earlier because I know I did. Hmm. Don't see it anywhere. All right, so I'm going to, again, use my scissors. So I'm going to, these are two different sizes. We've got smalls and we've got larges. And I think I'm just going to use large everywhere. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to put one over here. Let's tuck that right there. I'm going to take another one to accent the sentiment a little bit. So we'll tuck that in right there. And then another one up here. And that is where I added the accents on the front of the card. And then on the inside panel, maybe on the inside panel I'll use the small ones. Here I use big ones again, but I think I'll try what, see what the small ones look like. So I'm going to take one little one and add it here, just outside the circle. And another one here to accent, and another one here. Oh, I like the little ones on the inside. That looks really sweet. So there's the inside panel. And the outside panel. Oh my goodness, I love these cards. So there's the two cards I made with this. Let me get this out of the way. And here are the two cards that are with this style. Can you see them all? I hope so. Oh yeah, it looks like you can see them. Oh my goodness. Let me just check on the comments here before I start showing you a couple other things. Deb is asking if they're sequins or gems. These are our neutral self-adhesive sequins and you can find them in our annual catalog. And again, I'll have the supply list up tomorrow. I just didn't do it today because so many of the supplies are from the mini catalog and we don't have links for that until tomorrow. Kimberly is here. <laughs> Joan is commiserating with me because she says she loses things right in front of herself too. Um, yes, the colored vellum is a fun little technique. Thank you, you guys. You guys are so sweet. Oh my goodness. Thanks, Becky. Oh, and Deb is telling me her husband does book binding. So goodness, those designer series papers are going to be awesome for you. You'll have to make sure you get a couple of packs. All right. So I just want to remind you that my paper shares, 
I get to order them tomorrow and I hope to ship within 10 days of receiving the paper. It does take a lot of work and I go through a lot of work to make sure it looks really nice for you all. Um, so do check out my blog at stampingtoshare.com. I did leave a link for you because I think you'll really enjoy the paper uh, shares. And they're very reasonably priced for the amount of work that goes into them, let me tell you. All right, so let me, sh so those were the two cards we created today. If you haven't seen them, these were the two guy, guy cards that I created last week. They were super fun to make. If you want to go back and look at those, you can find that either in my Facebook timeline or you can go to YouTube and check it out. And then the cards I'm going to make next week, because I'm going to be so busy, I'm not going to have a lot of time to stamp, but I did make these and I want to share them with you. And they use the bright and beautiful designer series paper. Remember how I was telling you I love the ombre look? Well, here is a beautiful way to use those ombre papers in the bright and beautiful. These are the Scenic Wonders stamp set. Look how gorgeous this is. Are you guys just like flipping out over how pretty these are? Okay, so maybe not everybody is, but I am. And they can be truly gorgeous guy cards or, you know, this one in particular reminds me of my, of my husband and I when we went to Norway this past spring with Stampin' Up. We were on the Norwegian cruise. And, and you could look off our balcony and, and just see stuff like this as you were cruising along the shores of Norway. And so I really, I really had to, when, as soon as I saw that the Scenic Wonders stamp set came out with the annual catalog, I had to get it. But we are using um, a new embossing folder that's going to be part of the mini catalog starting tomorrow. And then this ribbon, um, it actually is white. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I colored it so that it would look pretty with my card. But that is also from the new catalog that is debuting tomorrow. So that's what we have to look forward to next week. And Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. I truly, truly appreciate you, and I look forward to getting together with you again next week on my Facebook Live or in my YouTube premiere that follows my Facebook Live. Um, and that will be, so this one will debut tomorrow, and then next week, of course, a week and a day will debut over at YouTube. And that's where we can chit-chat if we miss just chit-chatting here. Bye, everybody. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon.